biomarker testing is part of the management of all patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. And actually also some patients without metastasis, but maybe this is not the, the topic for our discussion today. Well, in a patient with non-squamous cell carcinoma, metastatic, the reflex testing includes PDL1, which is an immunohistochemistry, and this may drive the decision making for immunotherapy. And on the other hand, you need to do NGS, meaning next generation sequencing, looking at multiple genes for oncogenic alterations. And NGS may be done on DNA for mutations or on RNA to detect gene rearrangements. We have four alterations for which we have targeted therapies uh, approved in the first line setting and part of the ESMO clinical practice uh, guidelines recommendation, EGFR mutations, ALK gene rearrangements, ROS1 rearrangements, and BRAF mutations. But obviously there are other subgroups of, of, of patients. These alterations are mutually exclusive one from another. Uh, and beyond those four alterations, for which we have a, a treatment based on a targeted agent in the first line setting, we have multiple other alterations for which we do have some targeted agents, but right now approved or available uh, from second line. So meaning those patients will be uh, receiving platinum-based chemotherapy, possibly with uh, immunotherapy, and then you will have to go back to the NGS report and see whether there is a, a, an oncogenic alteration leading to uh, an opportunity for a targeted treatment. And this is true for KRAS. We just saw at the plenary session of ESMO 22, 2022 meeting uh, the results from the code break trial with Sotorazib, which is a targeted agent against KRAS G12C mutations uh, that was compared to docetaxel. So KRAS is a typical example of an alteration amenable to a targeted treatment as of today in the second line setting. We have other alterations. Uh, we have MET, we have RET, we have NTRK, and we have some uncommon EGFR mutations such as exome 20 insertion uh, mutations, which um, are observed in about uh, three to four percent of patients with non-squamous cell carcinomas. Well, those patients have an aggressive disease and this is what we see from uh, the Caterpillar uh, study just presented at uh, this ESMO 22 meeting. We have also data from Japan through the LC Scrum uh, network and what we can see that uh, in the second line setting and beyond, those patients with EGFR exome 20 insertion mutations, they do have uh, uh, aggressive disease with uh, multiple metastases, uh, rapidly progressing disease, and the PFS in a real world setting uh, ranges from three to four months. So this is not that much, and the overall survival of, of patient, again, is, is limited less than uh, one year for the majority of those patients. And this is because we miss uh, uh, access historically to uh, a dedicated treatment for those patients with exome 20 uh, insertions. So what was presented during this meeting is very interesting because these are indirect comparisons between uh, a, a clinical trial that assessed amivantamab, uh, a dual specific EGFR met antibody uh, that uh, has shown some efficacy in phase one, two studies uh, uh, for those patients with exome 20 insertions and those real-world data generated before the availability of amivantamab. So really interesting approach to try to match patients, similar to what we do in a randomized study, uh, but here it's called indirect because we are comparing results from a clinical trial, phase one, two study, the chrysalis study, uh, uh, which assessed amivantamab, to those uh, historical cohorts, but uh, uh, through a matching of patients, matching of the characteristics of the patients, gender, age, uh, location of metastasis, this kind of characteristics.
So it's really interesting to see that in those comparisons, we can see that the response rate with the mevandamab is uh, two times, three times higher than that of historical uh, 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 treatments such as chemotherapy, such as docetaxel or other single agent chemotherapy. And uh, with the mevandamab, uh, we have a, a, a reduction by 50% or more of the risk of death and disease progression. So, Clearly, uh, it's not a randomized study, but it's a way to assess the magnitude of benefit uh, with amivantamab as compared to uh, other or control, uh, an experimental controller. Well, what is striking in, in, in those uh, posters presented during the, the meeting is that uh, from the Japanese study, from the European study, the Caterpillar study, from uh, other comparisons in, in uh, uh, a larger Asian population, we have the similar results, you know. The, the, the hazard ratio for response rate for PFS and OS in those indirect comparisons are all the same, or at least in the same range. So it shows that uh, we have a consistent benefit uh, uh, observed with amivantamab as compared to historical treatment. This is a, a moving field. We have uh, beyond amivantamab TKI such as mobocertinib or sunvozertinib. Uh, um, these showing uh, 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 efficacy in the setting of uh, EGF, for example, 20 insertion mutations. We have uh, um, a discussion about the sequencing of treatment. Should these drugs move to the first line setting? which would be uh, logical given their efficacy in a late line setting and their ongoing trials, such as the Papillon trial combining chemotherapy plus amivantamab uh, versus uh, uh, chemotherapy alone in those patients with EGFR exon 20 insertion. So what does that mean? It means that the uh, uh, information about this EGFR status uh, will be required also for those uncommon mutations uh, from the decision making for first line in all the patients. That's a, that's a very good point because obviously we have the efficacy but we are, have also to consider the, the side effects. Well, these drugs uh, uh, are associated with side effects related to the EGFR inhibition, so meaning uh, gastrointestinal tract uh, related side effects, cutaneous uh, side effects such as rash and for amivantamab infusion related reactions and, and the more patients we are treating uh, the easier it is to manage and prevent in a proactive manner those side effects. It's very important to uh, build uh, uh, multidisciplinary uh, management of those patients. At my institution in Situ Curie we have a dedicated nurse to monitor the cutaneous toxicities of mevantamab and other uh, drugs associated with uh, such a side effects and it's very important for the patients. It's really helpful to, to keep the, the toxicities with a grade one uh, not uh, 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 leading to grade three, two or, or four, uh, what would mean a discontinuation of the drug. So, uh, so that's a, a very interesting management because being proactive means also educating the patients with about those side effects uh, so that the patient has a, a quick reaction when uh, something appears. These treatments are associated with a long-term benefit, meaning a long uh, duration of treatment. So it's very important to ensure that uh, tolerability uh, is okay for the patients.